and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Sewing on the Tyne. I'm Tamlin and here you'll find videos all about sewing, dressmaking, my journey, challenges that I'm involved in, hauls, fabric hauls and things like that. So first of all I wanted to say a huge thank you for all of the amazing feedback that I've had on my first video. I've been overwhelmed to be honest by everyone's lovely comments, all of the views and the subscribers in the first few days to have nearly 150 subscribers is absolutely amazing. So thank you so much for watching me, subscribing to me, sending me lovely messages. I've really really appreciated it. So thank you. Instead of tea today We've got a little gin and tonic. It's Thursday after all, although this is going up on Saturday, but I've got a little gin and tonic. I thought I'd show you what I've got because the bottle is just absolutely beautiful. So it's this Tarquin's Cornish Dry Gin and it's got violets and orange zest in and the bottle's just stunning. It looks very nice on my gin bar. So I got that from my husband for my birthday, so thank you very much. It's delicious. So I've got it with a lovely tonic and slice of orange. Cheers. So, should get on with the video. So, today's video is all about the hashtag so six challenge on Instagram. Now this was started by Ella, who on Instagram is at sewistella, and she's lovely, she's from Wales, she has been dressmaking for about a year and a half, but she's made some absolutely wonderful garments, and I love following her. So she has come up with a challenge called So Six, and the concept of that is to commit, very gently commit, to making six either patterns or fabrics or combinations of that you already own. So from your own stash. I don't like to call it a stash, I like to call it a collection. So throughout this video I will be calling it a collection. My fabric collection, my pattern collection. Stash just doesn't sound quite as nice. These are amazing, wonderful items that we should cherish and be proud of and therefore I treat them as a collection. I wonder if you're the same. Let me know in the comments. Do you call it a stash? Do you call it a collection? Let me know. So the reasoning behind this challenge was linked to the Make Nine challenge. Now, if you don't know what the Make Nine challenge is, every year it's a challenge where you set yourself nine garments that you would like to make that year. Now, I haven't done a Make Nine. I only started dressmaking in February, March last year. So it had already been and gone by that point. And this year I hadn't got around to planning a Make Nine. And then, Ella posted about this challenge and it just suited me a lot better I think. The idea of coming up with nine items to make, I'll make way more than nine items this year but I didn't want to at the start of January plan out nine things for the whole year because I'm sure that my tastes will change, I'll get excited by a new pattern, I'll buy some new fabric and I just didn't want to commit to those nine things. So I really liked Ella's idea of a gentler version of the Make Nine. So if you go over and check out Ella's Instagram, you'll be able to find out more about her challenge. I'll leave the link below and she's also written a blog post about it. So go and check that out. That really is delicious. I would highly recommend. So what I've done for my So Six challenge is I've set myself a time frame of three months. Now the reason I've done this is it's quite short, it's quite a challenge, but I think it will keep me more motivated to have that shorter time frame. If I say to myself I've got six months, I've got a year, I think I'll just get tempted by other things and not knuckle down and make those six garments or six patterns and fabrics. So I've given myself a time frame of three months, so by the end of March I would ideally like to have completed these three patterns and used these three fabrics. Now it's a challenge, it's supposed to be fun, it's not supposed to be stressful or pressurising, so I don't want to see it in that way. It's just a, a little reminder that I've owned these patterns and fabrics for a while and it will be good to use them because I'm still buying new fabric and new patterns so I should really use some of those that have been in my collection for a bit longer. So without further ado I'm going to start with the patterns and then move on to the fabric. The first pattern I'm going to show you is from Paper Cut Patterns. Now this is the Safe Tunic. First of all can I just say I absolutely adore the packaging that Paper Cut Patterns come in. It's just stunning. I love this brown recycled cardboard and then I just love obviously the name Paper Cut but it's been cut out of the cardboard for the logo so I think that's amazing. So the Safe Tunic is a long sleeved tunic 
dress or it can be worn as a tunic top. It comes in two variations. One is just a straight tunic, the other has sort of a flouncy frilled bottom. Now I haven't decided which version I'm going to make but I've owned this pattern for nearly a year. This was one of the first patterns I actually bought and it's not even been opened. So I definitely, definitely want to use that soon. I haven't planned which fabric I'm going to use with it. I don't have an occasion in mind, but I love the style of it. And I really think that it'll make an absolutely beautiful garment. Now I am going to insert a couple of pictures. I say I'm going to insert. Sam's going to insert a couple of pictures of inspiration that I found on Instagram. Once I bought this pattern and once I put it into my Sew6, I had a little look on there using the hashtag safe tunic to try and find some examples that were out there and I found a couple of really beautiful versions. One by Rachel who is House of Pinheiro on Instagram and the other one was Rosie Penner on Instagram and she made a beautiful version which was animal print. I love both of those versions and I definitely want to be making that one soon. The second pattern that I'm going to show you and that I've chosen for my Sew 6 challenge is from True Bias and it is the Hudson Pants. Now these are a slim fitting, relaxed jogging bottom. They come in a full length version and a cropped version. They've got a drawstring waist and cuffs on the bottom and I just love them. So I bought the Hudson Pants pattern after seeing a couple of really amazing versions on Instagram. One was by Danny, who is on Instagram as Pocket or Two. She's actually on YouTube as well, so I'll leave both of those links down below. And she made a full track suit. So she used the Linden sweatshirt pattern for the top and she paired that with the Hudson Pants. And she used this really lovely gray floral jersey for the Hudson Pants. And I just really like the look of it. It's sort of a lounge suit, lounge wear to wear around the house. So that really inspired me. And then also Emma, who is the zipper foot on Instagram, made an absolutely stunning pair from a floral jersey fabric with pink drawstring for the waist, with pink cuffs, and they were just absolutely gorgeous. I think that might be the first time I've said gorgeous in this video. But yeah, I absolutely loved Emma's version. She made them as pajama bottoms and then matched them with, I think it was actually a ready to wear top, but she added a little pocket in the same fabric as the fabric she used for the Hudson pants. And I just loved that combination. I'll leave the link to Emma's Instagram below and you can go and check it out if you haven't seen it already. So yeah, I'm definitely, definitely gonna make me some Hudson pants very soon. And the final pattern I'm going to show you as part of my Sew 6 challenge is the Ariel skirt by Tilly and the Buttons. Now this is a really lovely fitted mini skirt or knee length skirt with button detail down the side. So it's an asymmetric skirt so the buttons go down the side. I absolutely adore this version that's on the packet. The little flower buttons are just so cute and I love the bright yellow. But I actually bought this pattern because I saw a couple of amazing versions on Instagram. One of those versions was Rachel from the Stitch Sisters, who on Instagram is She Sews Vintage. Again, I'll leave the links below. And she has made a couple of really lovely versions. One um, that I'll insert a picture of here is a mustard denim version. And I think she got this out of less than a metre of fabric. So that's incredible. So I love that idea that I could use some fabric up that maybe I've got left over from another project and come out with an absolutely stunning skirt. The other Ariel skirts that inspired me were from Mel, who is handmade by Ditsy Tulip on Instagram and YouTube. And again, she's made some really lovely versions. I think she's made more than one and it's a style that really suits her and that kind of pushed me into buying the pattern because she, I think she did a YouTube video about them and I just thought, yeah, that's the one for me, I'm going to give it a go. So those are my three patterns that I've chosen for the Sew 6 challenge and now I'm going to show you my fabrics. So the three fabrics I've chosen aren't actually to be paired up with those patterns, they're just three fabrics from my collection that I've owned for quite a while and I would like to turn into some sort of beautiful garments soon before I make a start on using all of those lovely fabrics that I showed in my haul last week. So the first fabric I'll show you was bought at Guthrie and Garni. I bought this when I was there for the three day sewing workshop that I talked about in my last video. And this is a really lovely Atelier Brunette cotton. 
It's got a purple sort of indigo background and then these lovely diamond, I think they're actually rhombuses, all over and they're in sort of cream, mustard and an orangey colour. I got a metre and a half of that. I haven't decided what I'm going to make with it but I really loved the fabric. I sort of wasn't going to buy it at the time because it was quite pricey but then I just couldn't leave it. I had to have it. Purple is probably my favourite colour. So if you've got any ideas of what I should make with a metre and a half of this lovely cotton please leave them in the comments box down below. I'd love to hear some ideas because I've had this for about eight months now and still not used it. So I want to put it to use very soon. Right, the next fabric I'm going to show you is from Pin and Sew. Pin and Sew are an online fabric shop that sell an amazing range of knit fabrics, so sweatshirt in, jersey, things like that. And this, again, it's something that I saw on Instagram and I just couldn't get it out of my head and I had to have it in the end. So it's this amazing black sweatshirt in with these absolutely stunning, I think they're cranes, and these pink flowers, and it's just so detailed and lovely. And the back is just the softest, fleeciest thing. So I can't remember how much I bought of it, possibly two meters. I bought this originally to make a gift for somebody for Christmas but then I actually bought another fabric for that person so this is now in my collection waiting for me to do something with so um, I was thinking a South Bank, the Nina Lee South Bank sweater but again I'm not 100% firm on that decision so if you've got this fabric, if you've used it to make something, I'd love to hear about it. If I don't get it made up soon, it's not going to be useful really until next autumn winter because it's so warm. So I need to get making with that pretty soon. And the last fabric I'm going to show you as part of my Sew 6 challenge is incredible. As you know, I'm a cat lover. I've got two wonderful cats. I'm wearing cat print. I haven't actually told you what I'm wearing today. So I'm wearing a linden sweatshirt. It's in this grey cat print jersey. Now this is actually glow in the dark. So the eyes of the cats glow in the dark. I bought this fabric from the lovely Boz who is Fabric Magpie. She has an online fabric shop and I use black jersey from First for Fabrics for the cuffs and the neckband and the hem. And I absolutely adore it. It's one of my favourite makes of last year. Right, so the final fabric is this lovely cat print cotton jersey and it was bought from Sarah and her fabric shop is called Like So Amazing. I will link to it below. I'm not sure if she's still got this in stock but look at how cute it is. It's got pink flowers, it's got yellow flowers, it's got these lovely cats, larger cats and smaller cats and I just couldn't resist it, I had to have it. I think I bought two or two and a half metres of this because actually this does pair up with one of the patterns I've shown you and I want to make with this a Hudson pant linden sweatshirt combination lounge suit a bit like the one that I showed you from Danny earlier on I want to use this for the Hudson pants with some plain cuffing for the ankle cuffs and the waistband and then I don't know whether to just go full on cats and have this for the main body of the jumper as well. I'm not 100% sure, but I just think they would make the cutest, softest, snuggliest cat pyjamas. What more could you want? I adore it. So yeah, that one I want to get made up very soon as well. I don't know why I've left it so long to use it. I've had it for about four months and it's feeling unloved and I need to show it some love because I love it very much. So those are my six patterns and fabrics that I've chosen for the Sew 6 Challenge. If you are taking part in the Sew 6 Challenge, let me know. Head over to Instagram if you're not sure what the Sew 6 Challenge is and maybe you could get involved as well. As Ella says in her blog and her Instagram, it's just a very gentle challenge. It's a way of using up some things that we already own and creating beautiful things with them. So that's all for today. 
thank you very much for watching. Thank you again for all of your lovely comments. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love you to. If you know anyone that would like to watch this sort of video, then please share my channel with them. I'd love to see you back next week. Next week's video will be all about everything I made last year. So all of my dressmaking from 2018, I'm going to run through it all and share with you what I made. So if you'd like to see that, come back next week. Thank you again. I hope you all have a wonderful week and happy sewing. Bye. Hello. This is little Ziggy. Are you feeling friendly? No, apparently not. Are you feeling friendly? Mm. Go on then. <laughs>